Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper. I thought this would be a good year to do an experiment and uh, it turned out to be an even better year than I thought because of the ridiculousness of the situation. Uh, part of that includes severe drought and um, I think this is going to give us a really good look at something. So some time ago I started getting thornless blackberries. I think they originally came from Shalom Acres. And I found out that if I just cut off a section of this, I could actually get them to root. Normally, wherever they run down and touch the ground, they'll start having roots. And I thought, well, what happens if I just cut some sticks and shove them in the ground, and I take some with roots and stick them in the ground, and then we'll see how they do and compare it. So I'm gonna back up to the beginning, give you a couple updates through this, and then we're gonna check back today and see how bad that drought and just the neglect and other things affected these plants. Check this out. Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper, and when it comes to gardening, I'm rather experimental. If you think about it, anything that's new and cutting edge and interesting developments are because people tried something different. There's also the tried and true, tested, approved, people acknowledge as being, you know, real, different ways to garden that have worked for centuries, and uh, definitely like that stuff. To me, to find out what's gonna work best for me though, I've gotta kinda do a variety of things. That's exactly what I'm doing here. Personally, we're actually gonna give our entire garden a year off. We're gonna give it a Sabbath rest for an entire year. And for me, I realize that this is the worst time in my entire life not to have a garden. It just is. But I also realize it'll be a good exercise of faith. And uh, there's benefits to things, um, certain commands, they're not just, they're not arbitrary. They're for a reason, and I'll probably learn a lot in doing it. So once the initial fear and shock of actually making this decision, kind of, once I got over that, then I started to think about all the other wonderful things I could do. But right now I've got about a month left before I'm taking my year off. So what I'm doing is contemplating something that Mama Pepper and I talked about last year. Right here is some amazing, absolutely amazing thornless blackberries. And one cool thing about them is wherever they touch the ground, they start rooting. Um, I just pulled quite a few out of here. Yeah, here's a good example. Here it touched the ground. So here, oh, there we go. There's a root system. So what I'm doing at the moment is an experiment. I'm taking some of these longer ones like this that have no root system. I cut the root system off of this one. But I'm gonna take a section of this and plant it over here on this fence line. And I'm gonna take the ones that are rooted and plant them over here on this fence line. Now, cool thing, look at all this garlic popping up. That's wild garlic from the woods right there. Right there, that's wild whorehound. Um, there's all sorts of cool things around here that we could just kind of incorporate into our garden from the wild. But these guys here, these guys got roots. That's why I planted them here. And I'm gonna kinda do a test. We were talking last year about just having a big thing of just garlic kinda greeting us as we enter the garden. So that's what I'm working on. But I'm just sticking the sticks in here with no roots. And I'm gonna see how they do this year. So I'll shove them in and give them a nice, nice long, that end shoved down, this end shoved down. Same thing here, shoved down that way, shoved down this way. I've got some buckets of water. I'll water them in a minute. But I'm just seeing how these do with rooting themselves, not starting with anything, compared to how these do with starting with roots. And this is the already established one. And I was just using it as kind of the the cedar, um, meaning cedar, uh, S-E-E-D-E-R, not C-E-D-A-R. Um, so I'm gonna cut this one off and put it on that side and then cut some of this other stuff back and put it over there. Now this this is being filmed at right at the beginning of March. So I'll probably do a couple updates throughout the year and then kind of check the harvest too. But a lot of the harvest is gonna go to people like that because we're not gonna be harvesting either. Just gonna let it go. Wow, they are tearing into it, these guineas. These guineas found my uh, Garlic's popping up and they are annihilating them right now. Woo! Look at them go. <laughs> and then they run away. 
they'll vouch for it. It tastes good around here. So, beginning of March, that's the experiment. Let's check back, uh, I don't know if we'll do monthly or bi-monthly or what, but we'll check back and see how this goes throughout the year. And I'm not gardening, you know what I mean, uh, for a year, so we're just gonna not touch it. And we're gonna see how they do on their own, just completely left alone. I'm excited to see what happens. What do you guys think? Will the rooted do way better? Will they both work? Will these die and the rooted do good? Let me know what you think, and then let's see how we uh, fare. I'm expecting that by the end of the year, both will be amazing. I'm an optimist, I can be wrong, but that's what I'm expecting at the moment. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. And there were so many extra blackberries going to root, and so many other ones I trimmed. I mean, some of these are just huge, that I decided I had two rows over here behind the poultry, and just like our whole thing kind of slopes that way into the elderberries, it all kind of slopes this way into here. So the watershed from the poultry manure can help fertilize these. And I got an experiment right there. On the fence line is a bunch of thornless blackberries too. They did really good last year, but now that they're established, I'm looking forward to see what they will do. But the goal is to let this close one grow up that fence line. And then here, put in a row with a couple tight wires that we can kind of weave them on in the future. We're just gonna get the plants established first, so I'm gonna plant all these quickly before that sun goes down. All right, beginning of May, let's do an experiment update. Here is where the big mother of the blackberries is growing. And over here, these are the ones that had the root to the left here. We got Growth, growth, growth. I don't see any on that, but there's growth there. Good amount of growth here. Good amount of growth there and across here. And then more over here. You know, this side, look at all this. This is doing really well. All these ones I snipped off that had roots attached were doing rather well. Now let's see what happened with the ones that didn't have any roots, guys. I just took Things like this that were still alive, these ones are dead, but I just snipped them off, the ones that were alive, and shoved them in the soil. So what happened here? Oh, that one there that's bent over on the other side, that's growth. Look, here's growth. Here's growth. That one there behind it looks dead. I don't see any growth there. These two, well, this one in front looks dead. The back one still has some green on it. I wouldn't be surprised if something pops up there. And then across here, it's still green, and this one kind of looks dead. So over here where we had no, no roots, I've got one, two, three. Three spots at the moment that I see active growth. Not bad, considering they didn't even have roots. And over here where I put in the ones with roots, got one, two, three, Four, five, I think that's two separate ones. Six, seven, eight, nine. Of course, you'd expect it to do better with roots already established, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I thought something could happen over here. And I'll tell you what too, this, this big thing behind me, that started from one root back in the day. So if I've got three of these taking root already, then in a couple years, it can be a giant massive mound I'm propagating off of. That's not that, not that difficult here. So pretty cool to see. This is May 6th right now. So we'll give it another month and we'll see what's going on. It is now heading towards the end of August. And, and here's what we got going. I believe these ones would have done good with a decent amount of rain, but with just the complete and utter lack of rain, I'm gonna show you what happened to the ones with no roots at all. We seem to have dead, dead. There's more death in there. Here's more death and more death and more death and more death. They, they had been living, they're dead now. And then more death, but look, we actually had one winner. One still made it. Okay, this is, this is dead. But one still made it, even with the complete in total utter neglect it it made it which is crazy because a lot of people have been losing plants with roots we've actually had some uh 
oak trees and other things that just perished and they had roots. This guy didn't have roots to start with, still made it through the drought and exists. That's pretty awesome. I'll have some gaps to fill in when I get back to gardening next year, but to have one of those work, to me, I'm really, really, really impressed because it seems some of the ones even with roots didn't make it. Here we have one that did. That was probably from that. This one died. It had roots. Here's another one that died that had roots. This one is still going, although it's kind of eaten by bugs. This one's doing, doing great. It's gonna be a great producer. I'll train it up through here next year. I think there must have been something else. Yeah, right here. See that one with roots? Didn't make it. This one back here, uh, these are two different ones here. They both did really good. This one here is probably eight feet long total. And then this one too, same thing. Nice long one, doing very well. Doing very well. And uh, some more died in here. And then another one lives at the end. That comes out to here. So, not all the ones with roots even made it. One of the ones with no roots made it, and like I said, this was a ridiculous year for it because I was not out here watering it. I was not out here taking care of it. We just let it be. And when we let it be, boy, was there a lot, a lot of drought. There was an incredible lack of water for them. So to have those couple with the roots die, that makes sense, that's reasonable to me. Also, to have one with no roots make it, that's incredible. So guys, again, all I was doing was taking some cuttings off of some of this and just shove it in the soil. I shoved it in the soil and got new plants. And where they touched the ground and started rooting, I just cut them off and then put them, put them in the soil. And they already had some roots established. To me, absolutely crazy stuff. I love plant propagation. I love saving seeds. I love grafting. I love planting, you know, whatever I can and growing ground covers and vines and shrubs and bushes and trees that are edible and useful. So hopefully that inspires you guys a little bit. I'm a little surprised with the results. Um, I really didn't think any even had made it that didn't have roots, but we got a liver, uh, one that lived. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Pop out. That's because you know.